Praise the Lord to all the viewers. Now that you might have seen my previous video which is on church being evangelical. So today's video is church being missional. I'm doing a series on the doctrine of church in order for everyone, every church to understand the doctrine of church, the God's purpose of church. With what intention did God create the concept of church? So I will request each one of you to watch all the series so that you have the entire concept of the doctrine of church. So today's topic is church being missional. So missional means to be sent. So the theme of the mission is to be sent. The God sent Jesus Christ on a mission. Jesus sent church on a mission. Church sends individual on a mission. So did you see in all these three aspects you see being sent. Missional means to be sent. The whole purpose around missional mindset means being missional means the lifestyle, the postures, the thinking, the behavior, the practices. Everything should be to save this world from the sin and to introduce the Savior, introduce the gospel to this fallen world. So that is being missional mindset. That is being church being missional. That is how every church should organize its principles towards being missional. So the basic understanding of what missional means is you go and praise the gospel, you stay with their families, you stay in their villages, you stay in their towns, you involve in the welfare of being good of the people, both in good and in their bad. So that is when an individual, a family is called as being a missionary. So you see the example of Graham Staines, a missionary who has come from Australia, who had two children. He was a missionary in Gujarat. He was uh, being a missionary in a village where he was uh, doing his ministry. He was involved in the family of every individual. In his missionary, he saved close to 2,000 people. All these 2,000 people who were uh, thrown out of the villages because of uh, leprosy, it was Graham Staines who won 2,000 souls as being a missionary in that particular village. He was lively burned one day as part of his missionary, as part of his mission while he was doing evangelism at a particular village, while he was sleeping in the night in his van with two of his children. In the midnight, people came and put petrol on his entire van and they burned him alive, both father and two children. And when the police went uh, and asked Graham Stain's wife, she forgave the people who burned his husband and the two children. That is the love of God. So, I'm just giving this as an example so that you are encouraged, you are motivated. You're stirred up in the spirit. So I want, if you have not watched the movie, please go and watch this movie called Graham Stains. Okay, coming to uh, the context back again. If you see in the first century, all the apostles were missionary. If you see an example, Peter was a missionary among Israel. He was primarily focused on the Jewish people. He was doing his missionary all along Israel and we tend to see Philip doing it in uh, Judea and Samaria and we see Paul his missionary was a missionary lifestyle he had no certain end he had no boundaries he was walking to every village to every town to every place to every tribe to every culture and he traveled 10,000 miles 16,000 kilometers. He planted 14 churches. He was going to every town, preaching the gospel, and then he was making disciples. He was staying there for 
several years and he was raising leaders he was raising pastors from the church and he did church plantings that is how you tend to see paul planting 14 churches you see this in acts of the apostles paul planted antioch church and he stayed there for one year paul has also planted galatians church in the first missionary journey paul has stayed close to 18 months in his second missionary journey he planted first thessalonia and second thessalonia letters after planting the churches to encourage them he stayed there for 18 months in third missionary journey he was there in ephesus for 3 years he he wrote the letters first corinthians second corinthians um, and romans uh, while he was 3 years in ephesus so do you see he was a missionary staying for 18 months staying for 3 years staying for 1 year so that is how a missionary lifestyle is that you involve totally into the lives of the people in both good and the bad of the people little bit more manifestation of what church being missional is as i explained in the initial stages so the first point is god sending jesus as a missionary you see jesus was a missionary for three and a half years into this world you see this through the scriptures john 17 18 as you sent me into this world are you seeing Jesus is praying to the Father in John 17 and Jesus is saying you have sent me into this world. So what did I say? Missional means being sent. Did I say this? So do you see God sending Jesus on a mission? You see here being sent. So Jesus was a missionary for three and a half years. He was preaching the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. He was preaching the gospel of repentance. Even if you see in Mark 1.38, you see that Jesus telling, let us go to a different village because I've come for preaching. So Jesus came as a missionary to preach the gospel, to preach the gospel of repentance, to restore this world, to take this entire world back to God. You also see in John 20.21, 20, Jesus said to them again, please be with you as the father has sent me do you see jesus telling father has sent me so sent me is being missional now you in the second thing you see jesus sent the church for the mission you see in luke 9 2 and he sent them out to the proclaim the kingdom of god even in acts 1 8 but you will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Judea and in all Samaria and to the ends of this earth. You see here Jesus sending the church on a mission. So the church has to be missional. Church should send missionaries from the church. But what is the state of the churches today? The churches today are more inclined and more focused towards prosperity gospel. It's all about money. It is all about wealth. It is all about healing. It is all about traditions. It is all about cultures. In everything, you tend to see the selfish ambitions of the pastors and at the same time, believers as well. Pastors don't want to correct the people. Pastors don't want to preach the truth because they fear that if the truth is preached, the flock of God will not come to the church. So they try to please people and people are happy because they are not condemned in spite of living with sinful passions, in spite of living in the sin. When the pastor doesn't condemn, the church is happy. Pastor is happy because the church is growing in number. Because he is getting the tithes. That is the sad state of this entire universal church today. So, but you see here, what is biblical? Church has to be missional. We saw God sent Jesus on a mission. We see Jesus has sent church on a mission. Mission means to be sent. You think and introspect yourself. Do you remember at least one person whom you know is a missionary from the church? Okay, moving on. Third point, church is sent to every culture. 
We see this in John 1.14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as the one Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Luke 5.29. And the levy made him a great feast in his house, and there was a large company of tax collectors and other reclining at the table with them. So we see the churches were there at every culture, at every town, at every nation. God doesn't discriminate the God's creation. He sends the churches across the world, across the country, across the state, across the town, across the village. So we see the church exists at every culture. Now the fourth point, church is sent as community. So church we need to understand, church means a spiritual body of Lord Jesus Christ. Church means a spiritual community. So uh, we see in Acts 2, 42 to 47, and day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers day by day those who were being saved. We also see Acts 5.42. And every day in the temple and from house to house they did not cease teaching and preaching that Christ is the Jesus. So do you see? Here... Church being a community is introducing the Savior, Jesus Christ, preaching the good news to house to house. In the first century, apostles did. I'm reading it back again so that you have a clear understanding. Every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease, they did not stop teaching and preaching that Christ is Jesus. Do you see, this is entire church which was being missional. This is entire church in the first century, very active in being evangelical, in being missional. It is not me who is seeing, I am showing you through the scriptures. You as well see in John 13, uh, 34, 35, you also see in 1 John 3, 16 and 17. Church is a community, it is a group of born again believers. They are supposed to be missional, being sent to every state, to every house, to every town, to every state, to every country, to the ends of this world. That is what church as a community has to be missional. So, the church should define its principles, its practices, its lifestyle, its thinking, its behavior its practices around the purpose that is to define and to introduce Jesus as the Savior to this world. Their mission should be the mission of Christ. As we saw, Jesus was on a mission. That is how you need to see that every church, every person has to be missional the way Jesus had a mission. These people also should have it as their mission. We need to understand, our mindset should be very clear. We need to understand very clearly that this world is very temporary for us. First Peter 2.11, we tend to see Peter writing that we are aliens, we are strangers to this world. What it means? We are on a mission. We are on a battlefield. Our fight is with the evil forces of this world. So, and we tend to see in John 17, Jesus is praying to the Father, saying that those who received the word, they don't belong to this world, as I don't belong to this world. Means, those who received Jesus Christ, those who received God's word, they belong to the kingdom of God. They belong to heaven. So that is what Jesus is telling. So the mindset of a believer is to be that. We don't belong to this world. We belong to God's heaven. We belong to the kingdom of God. We belong to God's family. And we are on a mission which is to restore this fallen world which happened in Genesis 3 because of the sin of Adam's sin. We all belong to Adam's descendancy and we still 
have sin in us we struggle daily we battle daily through our thoughts through the flesh through the manifestation of this flesh so we ought to be ambassadors for god so missional living has an understanding that we are set apart people we are chosen people we are predestined people we are called out people which is to restore this fallen world so god has chosen you god has set apart from this world set apart means god has a separate purpose for all those people who belong to him for all those people who are the believers of lord jesus christ and the purpose is to restore this fallen world through christ jesus which is the gospel church is true and authentic only when it is being evangelical and when it is missional when it principles are tied around being evangelical and being missional we also see in second corinthians 5 8 15 to 20 that we are the ambassadors of god what is the meaning of ambassadors ambassadors means they try to build the relationship between two entities if you see an example of the country ambassador tend to build the relationship between two countries and god has given this responsibility of being an ambassador to the people who believed in the lord jesus christ they are supposed to reconcile this entire world back to god through christ jesus what is the meaning of reconcile reconcile means to take back to god why do we need to take back to god because when sin came we are separated from god we are alienated from god from genesis 3 those who do not accept jesus christ as the personal savior they belong to this world they belong to not god's army but satan's army that is the reason god want you and me to be ambassadors to restore to reconcile those people who do not know jesus to know jesus to introduce the savior jesus christ to this fallen world so that they are reconciled back to god that is the reason you are the ambassadors for christ jesus you also see in ephesians 2:10 that you are a handy workers for christ jesus handy worker means you are supposed to do the things what jesus did what did jesus do jesus prays the kingdom of god is at hand repent and you are supposed to do the same thing you are like a mini christ in this world that is how you are supposed to grow in christ likeness by doing the things by imitating the things of the christ being missional means we should engage in this world in the same way as jesus did missional church is where every believer should put his effort should strive should put a conscious effort to be an agent of god every individual should put the mission of god as the mission of himself that is what is being missional so jesus also said we are the salt light to the nation what is the meaning of salt let us see the scripture matthew 5:13 to 16 you are the salt of this world but if the salt has lost its taste how shall its saltiness be restored it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under the people's feet so we know how important the salt is if you don't add the salt in any curry you will not have the taste so similarly jesus and god's word is that salt and that is in us the moment we accept jesus as our savior that flavor is in us and we are supposed to give this flavor to those people who do not know the flavor and the world who do not accept jesus christ do not have the flavor that is the reason you are supposed to give the taste as being salt to this nation you are supposed to give this taste to this world and if you do not give this taste and if this saltiness is not there in you if the word of god if the gospel is not there in you then you will also be trampled when jesus comes at the second time into the lake of fire not to heaven 
That is how being missional and being evangelical very essential. You also are the light to the nation. You need to understand uh, in the 14th verse, you are the light of this world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So that means we are the light. You are supposed to give the light while people are in the darkness. The world is in the darkness. The world is full of darkness. When people do not accept Jesus as the personal savior, they are in the darkness. And when you accept Jesus as the personal savior, God's light is in you. You are the light and you are the light to this entire nation. You are the light to the world. And if you don't give light to this world, you will be thrown into the darkness. So how important it is for you to understand that we are the salt and we are the light to the nation. And we are supposed to give salt and light to this world. But an introspection for you. Does your local church manifest this? If your local church do not manifest being church, evangelical and missional, you ought not to be silent. You ought to go and speak to your pastor until church has to be evangelical and missional and we are not doing it. Don't think that it is not your job. You are supposed to be passionate to serve the Lord. God is going to see your heart. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 2nd chapter, Paul very clearly writes and condemns God is looking into my heart. I'm not here to please people. So don't try to please pastor. Don't try to please people, but to please God. Application. Does church need to be evangelical and missional? Yes, it has to be evangelical and missional. I've written a small text. I will read it for you. Every disciple of Christ should strive to be an agent in representation of the kingdom of God and every follower should try to carry the mission of God into every sphere of his life. We are all missionaries sent into this world. Being missional means being sent. We saw God sent Jesus Christ. We saw Jesus sent church. We saw churches at every place. We see church as a community. Everything is sent by God with a mission with a purpose, which is to be God's army. Now that you have understood that your purpose is to live according to the purpose of God, which is to be evangelical and missional. But the sad state of the churches today are not being evangelical and missional. So you make an impact in the lives of the other people by being evangelical and missional. Jesus says in 2 Corinthians 5.15, while I read this, understand from the mind of Jesus Christ, not from your mind. You will feel painful. 2 Corinthians 5.15, and he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Means Jesus knows that we are not living for God. We are not being missional. We are not being evangelical. That is the reason. Jesus is saying, at least from now onwards, at least after reading this scripture, at least after receiving me as your personal savior, don't live for yourself, don't live for your families, don't live for your children. Those are all secondary things. But the primary thing is to live for me because I died and rose again and I have given a promise to you that you will also raise again when you sleep in the Lord. But the point to make is, we ought to be gospel preachers. We ought to be gospel presenters to this entire world. I hope you have understood this and hope you are blessed with this. You are encouraged. If you like this video, please subscribe and share it to your friends, neighbors and relatives so that through this many lives may be impacted. So may God bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you.